My friend Tux here and I have created a complete guide on how to get started with .NET MAUI development on Linux, deploying to a physical Android device, and we're going to show you in this video right now. So one of the questions that I always get is like, hey, can I now uh, develop .NET MAUI apps that run on Linux? And the answer is no, unfortunately. Um, we don't have a Linux target yet. Who knows what might happen, but we don't have any plans for it at the time of recording. Um, but what you can do now is develop on Linux with VS Code and deploy to Android. So Android is the only target that we support right now um, when developing on Linux. So on Linux, you can install VS Code, the .NET MAUI extension, all the stuff for your Android environment or your physical device, and then deploy to that. So you can get building with .NET MAUI apps on Android and from there work to, I don't know, your iOS app or your Windows app or whatever you want to do. So that is really cool, right? And in this video, I'm going to show you all about how to do that, the steps you need to take, everything that you need to set up. Um, the things that you do need to set up from the top of my head is like the .NET SDK, we're going to see that, OpenJDK um, 11 from Microsoft, that's what we're going to see. Um, we're going to install um, VS Code, we're going to install Android Studio, and I'm going to show you all of that step by step. It's a bit of a rough video, it's a little bit raw, I'm going to make some errors here and there as well, but that will show you um, what things to run into, exactly where to click, where I got my stuff, and you can find all the links that I uh, used down in the video description below. So basically, let's just get to it. All right, uh, so let's get started. Now, right off the bat, you can probably see that I have a bit of a complicated setup. Um, at the bottom, you can see my Windows 11 taskbar. So that's my host, that's my physical machine. I've got Windows 11 installed. On the left, you can see Hyper-V on top of that uh, with a VM installed with a clean install of Ubuntu 22.04, I think the latest LTS um, release right now. Um, so I got that installed. Now it's been a while since I touched Linux, so I had to figure out a couple of things. And I'm going to assume that if you landed here, you are a Linux user, so you probably know more about Linux than I do. Um, and that also means that you know more about your Linux distribution and your Linux installation than I do, um, because there is a gazillion distributions, right? So things might be a little bit different. This works for Ubuntu, uh, which is, I think, a fairly popular popular one, and that works with other popular distributions. If you have a more complicated setup, you might still get some information from this video, so be sure to watch it all, um, but it might be a little bit different for you. But you're this advanced Linux user, right? So you can figure it out. Okay, so we've got that. Um, and then here on the right, I have a physical device, my physical Android device. I got it right here. You can see it kind of like mirrors the same screen. Um, and um, I need that because if you have a virtual machine with Linux, then the emulator that you're running on Android is going to be another virtual machine, right? So, and that nested virtual machines, virtual machineception doesn't really uh, work that well usually. So um, I couldn't get that to work. Maybe it's just impossible. Uh, so I had to use my physical device. So as a bonus, you're going to see how to do it with a physical device, but also I couldn't really get my USB port to connect to the VM. So as an extra, extra bonus, I'm going to show you how to connect to Wi-Fi with your physical Android device to Linux for um, debugging. So bonus at the end of the video, make sure to stay tuned. All right. So, um, Again, I think also with the emulator and virtual machines, if you again, if you're a Linux user, I'm going to assume that you have that installed on your physical device and the emulator that is going to install, I'm going to show you how to install it, is going to work just fine, right? So you should be able to just use that. All right, so back to the task at hand. Um, this is a clean installation. So I open up a terminal. If I do .NET dash dash info, it's going to say, hey, I don't know what .NET is, right? Um, I think Ubuntu in some flavors um, comes with .NET pre package, that would be great. Then you already see the info here, you can skip this step, but else you will get something like this. And it recommends me like, hey, but you can get this through Snap. Now, in my time, when I touched Linux, Snap wasn't a thing. And I think that's some kind of new package manager, which is really cool. But please don't use this. Um, because I did this and the way Snap works is that it creates a read-only part of this package uh, on your disk and then if I do .NET workload install to install the .NET MAUI bits, it's going to say, hey, this is read-only. I can't install extra stuff here, which is a great security feature, but not great for what we're trying to do. Um, so don't do this. Now, I think you can also do apt get, right? It says something like that as well. Uh, maybe you can get that to work, but I couldn't figure that out. So what I did is turn to my browser and I Googled with Bing to install.NET 7, and I landed on this download.NET 7 page. 
Um, and um, here you can download like the package manager instructions. You can download the binaries for all, of course, Linux, Mac OS, Windows. And what triggered me was like this, hey, .NET install scripts. That sounds like something that I can work with, right? I have this script, I can see what it does. Um, so let's just try that. So I clicked on that and here we have a scripted installation. So um, you have this install script documentation. So that's what we, uh, the, I looked at that as well. I will put all the links down in the show notes. So uh, have a look at that if you want to follow this along. Um, so I, I'm going to copy this URL right here. And I went to this documentation and um, here you have this reference, right? So you can see what is going on. So by default, this is going to install, if you just run it, uh, if you download it and run it uh, without any parameters, it's going to install the um, current LTS release, which is .NET 6, um, which is great, but .NET MAUI does not follow that same pattern. So for uh, .NET MAUI, you want to have .NET 7, right? So I want to have .NET 7 installed, and that's what I'm going to show you. So here, if you scroll down, yada, 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 I don't even know. Um, I think somewhere I found that options. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, here we are. So we have this channel, STS, LTS, where you can just say, hey, give me this two part um, version and then we can do that. So dash dash channel, that's what we want to do. Okay, so let's go back to my terminal and I'm going to say wget, um, which is a client to download whatever content is behind this URL. I'm going to paste the URL in here and it adds these weird characters. It does that, I don't know why, um, but let's get rid of them. So I just want to have this one, press return, and it's going to download this script. So if I do now um, inspect whatever is in this folder, I see this .NET install script. You can't execute it yet. So let's do chmod plus x plus execute um, .NET install. So now we can execute it. Um, and you don't need any administrator access for this. So you don't need to do sudo or anything. You just um, can run this script. So dot slash .NET install, and I'm going to say dash dash channel, uh, 7.0, right? So I want to have the 7.0 channel. And it's going to download it now. You can see here 7.0, um, uh, 306, that's the latest version at the time of recording. So it's going to download all the bits and it's going to put that in the right place. Um, and then I do have to add it also to my um, um, environment variable so that it can find it in the right places. So for Linux, um, at least for the VS Code stuff, is um, it looks at the environment variables that are somewhere. So you can see added to the current path uh, will only be visible when sourcing script. So I don't know if it's supposed to do this automatically. It didn't do it for me, so I'm going to do it manually. Um, but yeah, you ha I'm using bash. So what you want to do is um, find your, um, let's see, ls-al. We have this bash rc. That's where you put your variables for bash. Again, I'm going to assume a little bit of knowledge about um, Linux if you're interested in this. Um, so let's just open that, open dot bash rc. Uh, I don't know, I, I, I tried to do it with vim or Vi, um, and I got stuck. I never got out of it. I had to kill the VM, burn down the whole house to get out of him. Uh, so I'm just gonna use this notepad. I'm kind of a, a lame Linux user, uh, but I'm going to add here at the end, I'm going to say export. Actually, I have it copied here. So let me just copy it here from off screen uh, so that you don't have to watch me typing and paste it in here. And it's all the way down here at the bottom. Let me give a, a couple of extra returns so it's in the middle of your screen. Um, and we can say export. So now we create this new environment variable, basically. .NET root is home. And this is a built-in kind of um, environment variable, which is your home directory, um, dot .NET. So it installed it in my home directory. And then uh, we do the same for the path. So path is kind of like your global, where all the paths is whenever you type this command, like chmod is one. Um, it's going to look into this path variable to find find where that executable is. And I'm going to uh, add the path and then do the .NET root uh, and .NET root tools in there. So now we have the path set up. Let me remove the extra things here and I can save this. So control S um, and now I have to reload this. So you can either restart this um, terminal window or you can just say touch uh, dot bash rc touch is kind of like hey um, um, reload it and whenever i do dot net dash dash info now you will see that it still doesn't work okay so oh it wasn't touch it was source source uh, dot bash rc sorry touch is another command that um, sees if you're you know it, it kind of like updates the last modified date of your 
um, um, file, I think. So source, that was the one I was looking for. Now .NET dash dash info, that will show me .NET info. So .NET is installed successfully. And I can see a couple of things. So runtime environment, oh, actually the version, uh, the commit, fine, runtime environment, Ubuntu, la 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 la. Um, so more versions, SDK installed. So that's the thing that we're we are after. And we have these runtimes installed. And .NET root is set and it's set to this path. So we got all of this, which is great. Now what we can do is we can install the uh, .NET MAUI workload. And with the workload, um, only on Linux is only Android is supported, right? Only targeting Android. So if you do .NET, um, inst no, sorry, workload, install MAUI, it's not going to work. At some point in the process, it's going to crash because it says, hey, this is not supported on Linux, which makes sense. So what you can do is say MAUI Android. And now it's going to work because it only takes the Android bits and installs that on this Ubuntu machine. So this is going to take a little while. I'm going to let this run in the background. But whenever this is finished, we have the .NET MAUI Android bits on our machine, and we're ready to build Android uh, Android apps with .NET MAUI, basically, and also Android apps built on .NET 7. But who wants to do that? Just use MAUI. All right, so we'll let this run. At the same time, the other thing that we uh, still need to install as well is the Open JDK. Um, so that's the kind of like Java development kit, right? And Microsoft has its own build of that, and we need a very specific version of that to work. So again, search with Bing, like, hey, how do I install Open JDK? Again, the link will be in the show notes as well. Um, and you will land on this page. And here you can see install Windows, Mac OS, show six more, install on Ubuntu. Hey, that sounds like us. So let's click that. And here we have, again, some scripting, right? So this is going to capture the Ubuntu release. So it's going to get the version number from our system in a variable. And then it's going to do that wget again to get some package from here. Um, and it's going to install that package. And then afterwards, uh, or it's going to add the repository to our package manager. Uh, that's what it's doing here. And then afterwards, we can install this um, OpenJDK um, uh, package, right? But be careful because this 17 one is not the right one. With that, it's not going to work. You need 11 right? Um, so make sure, remind me whenever I'm going to copy paste this, that I change that. All right, thank you. This is on you now. Um, so okay, we're going to copy this, I'm just going to copy this, well, I can copy this in, in one go, basically. Let's see if it doesn't add the weird characters, because else I will be in trouble. This is still running, I can open a new tab, because this is not, you know, this is not going to interfere with each other. So let me zoom in so you can follow along what's going on here. And let me paste this in here. So well, this seems all right. So let's just enter that. I need to do sudo, so I need to enter my password here. And it's going to add the Microsoft repository now to my system. So um, that happened. And you can see it picked up on my Ubuntu 2204. Um, it's all set up. Now I can go to the next command. And again, I'm just going to copy it until here. So the 17, so I don't get the right one. Thank you for reminding me. Um, and now I go back to my terminal and paste this in here. Paste and I'm going to add 11 on here, and then I'm going to press return, and now it's going to install everything uh, for OpenJDK 11. So again, uh, one of the prerequisites, checked. We got it, done. Let's see how the other window is going. This is done. Successfully installed workloads MAUI Android. Cool. So if I do .NET workload list, it should now have MAUI Android. And you can see manifest version. So this is something that you should check. If this is in here, everything is set up properly. Your .NET installation, your .NET SDK works, your .NET workload MAUI Android thing works. That's all in place. Open JDK, do you want to continue? Yes, let this uh, go on for a little while. Um, and while this is going on, let's install two other things. Um, first, let's end, uh, install Android Studio. And here I have another kind of like app store, which is Ubuntu software, uh, which is really great, which makes it really easy. You can probably also uh, use Google to Bing uh, Android Studio install, download that through the right things. But I would assume that the most modern um, Linux distributions now have some kind of app store, right? So we have that. Um, in this case, I'm just going to use that. So I'm going to search here and I'm going to search for Android Studio. Um, because that will bring in all the things that I need to build stuff for Android, right? So this is not strictly necessary. You can also install it with different things. There is um, some uh, documentation with the VS Code extension, the .NET MAUI VS Code extension as well. Uh, we have a build target for .NET MAUI, which brings in all the necessary stuff. But I would just like to do this because this also brings in um, the um, device manager and the SDK manager and the um, emulator manager. So I can install different images for emulators, right? So I can manage 
manage that from here all as well. So that's why I like to install the Android Studio. If you have the disk space to do this, just install this. It will make your life much easier. So you can see this is installing. Um, so again, we can just let this run. And of course, we need VS Code, right? So I'm just going to search here for Visual Studio. Who would have thought? Like, if you're old like me, you know Microsoft and Linux, it's like, you know, they weren't always friends. Now we are, luckily. And now we see Microsoft products here in this Linux app store. Crazy, crazy times. So you can even go with the VS Code Insiders. I'm just going to go with a regular one. Doesn't really matter which one you take. Again, I'm going to click Install, enter my password, and it's going to install VS Code as well. Um, so, okay, this is running. Let's see, my OpenJDK is, is done here. I'm if, actually not sure this is going off script here. So if I type OpenJDK, uh, it's not doing anything, but I'm pretty sure it installs and it... Uh, actually, maybe I need to do a new... Uh, terminal as well, open JDK to kind of like, no, that doesn't work. Okay, so I'm just going to trust that this works. Um, I'm pretty sure that I didn't need to do anything here, um, that it sets up all the right paths and it will pick it up later. Um, so, okay, we got that. Um, how do I check my progress on the Android Studio and Visual Studio Code? I don't see code is installed. Okay, so we should have Visual Studio Code. So if I scroll here, we can see Visual Studio Code. I can just start that already. And do we have Android Studio already too? Not yet. All right, so let's just wait for that a little bit. Um, in, in the meantime, Visual Studio Code is coming up and we have all of this. So we need some extra things in our key ring. Let's just enter my password again. And here we are, Visual Studio Code on Linux. How amazing is that? Um, so this is installed. Um, and here you, of course, have the terminal as well, right? We have the build-in terminal. And if we go in here, um, can I zoom this in a little bit for you? I can. Then you can here also see .NET dash dash info. It's going to give me the same thing, right? Just all uses the same stuff on your machine. So this is all ready to go. Um, now, what I really would like to see is Android Studio coming up as well. Oh, it's installed now. I got a little notification at the top. So it should be popping up here in my application overview anytime. There we go, Android Studio, and just start it. And whenever you start it, it's going to ask you to import settings. I don't have any settings to import. Um, help improve, no, I'm not going to help you, sorry for now, and welcome. Right, so here we have this wizard who's going to walk you through getting the prerequisites. So next, I'm just gonna choose the standard installation, which is fine. Um, choose a theme, also fine, because I'm not gonna use this UI anyway. And here's the things that it's going to install. The Android emulator, build tools for API 34. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, the image, system image for the emulator. This all looks good, so let's just do that. You have to accept all the license agreements here and of course, read them first. I spent some time, I was bored some evening, um, reading through them. Uh, of course, you should too just accept them. You can bulk accept them by clicking the root nodes here, accept, and then you can click next. And it's going to um, do a couple of things here as well, install for a while to get all this stuff on my machine. So I'm going to do a very professional cut right here in the recording. Um, so you won't even notice it, I promise. Um, and then it will all be done and we'll pick up from there. One eternity later. And we're back. Okay, so here you can see a little overview. Everything got installed. We're all good here. So let's just click finish. Um, and we can actually go into Android Studio. It's being started for us. More actions. And you can see this SDK manager because what we want to do is actually install the target for um, API 33 at this point. Um, I think for .NET 8, the default target is going to be 34, but for .NET 7, it's going to be 33. So we want to install that SDK as well. Um, and then for here, for the tools, I think everything is okay. Android emulator, I don't think we need to do anything here. So let's just install this um, um, SDK 33 as well. It's going to install a couple of things. Is that all right? Yes, that is. And it's going to download some more things. Um, but in the meantime, I can now, maybe just, for, uh, uh, the, just to be sure, let's restart Visual Studio Code um, so that it picked up on all the new environment variables and that kind of stuff. Um, so here we have Visual Studio Code and here we also have to install some stuff, right? So um, what we need to do is actually install the .NET MAUI extension, .NET MAUI. We can just search for that and that will bring in all the stuff that we need. So we have um, the um, um, C Sharp Dev Kit that it needs to bring in and some other things. Um, so we can get to this description page, you can click install, it starts installing, you can read the description while we're doing that, um, all great stuff. So here it is. 
Um, actually, let's see if Android Studio is coming along. This one's already done. Uh, so we have SDK 33 installed as well. You can see actually the SDK path is home Gerald Android SDK. So also that is installed in my um, home directory. So let's just remember that. I don't think uh, we need that to uh, set that manually. I think it's picked up automatically, but just to be sure uh, we know where it is right now in case that we do need it manually. Um, if you check here under more actions, what you can also do is have your virtual device manager, right? So um, you can have your um, Android emulators here. So by default, it installs this API 34 one. And if I click uh, start, then you can see that this doesn't work on my virtual machine. But for you, it just should start, um, or you can start it whenever you start debugging your .NET MAUI project. Um, you can also edit it and edit all the uh, properties right here or create a new one um, and create one uh, according to your wishes. So there's that. Um, but I'm going to use my physical device, right? Actually, while you're waiting for the .NET MAUI extension, it takes a little while for some reason. Um, I can actually go over here to my physical Android device. I can also um, 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 touch this, touch this from uh, my screen mirror here and go to settings and find the developer settings. So where are those? Somewhere here, probably developer options. Um, and here you have to turn on the developer options. Again, I'm going to assume that you know how to do this for an Android device, else um, just find it. I think you have to tap on some Android version number a couple of times. Enable USB debugging right here. And whenever you do that, you can also enable wireless debugging. So you can do wireless debugging. So I'm just going to go in there. It's already enabled. And you can see that I can pair it and I can connect to it with this IP. So I got uh, all things set up here. Um, I think you first need to pair. I'm not absolutely sure, but I will show you how to do that in a minute. Um, and here you can see that it now installed the C-sharp dev kit. I'm getting a welcome for that. I'm going to close that one. And I'm going to go to the welcome of this .NET MAUI extension. The first thing I need to do is connect my account to C-sharp dev kit. So let's click connect. Um, I have to connect my um, um, VS uh, Visual Studio subscription here um, because this works with the same terms as like the full Visual Studio. So you can definitely use it for free with um, Visual Studio Community. Um, um, but also if you already, if you have a, a, a Visual Studio subscription already or through your company, log in with that account and you should be good to go. For some reason, it's not coming up here. Uh, sign in. So I'm just going to go to my notification here in the bottom right, click sign in here. Um, and that does work. So I'm going to click that it's going to bring up my browser, I have to log in here with my credentials. So I'm going to do that. And of course, I have two factor authentication enabled. So I need to log in here with my code as well. Don't bother trying this right now, because this is pre recorded. I hate your virtual bubble. This is not live. Um, so log in here through my device, and that will bring me back. Hey, you are signed in now. You can close this window. So I'm going to minimize this again, and I'm back here in VS Code, and it locked me in. Um, the C# -sharp Dev Kit extension requires a pre-release version, so for some reason it installs the wrong version. I'm going to upgrade that. That's going to run, um, and now I lost my welcome to .NET Maui page. Can I actually get that back somehow? Yes, no, maybe. Um, maybe if I restart Visual Studio Code. Um, I will get the welcome screen again. Um, you don't really, of course, need the welcome screen necessarily, but it will take me through some steps uh, to see if we got everything. Uh, so here we get this welcome screen, and here at the right you can see the, the getting started for C Sharp Dev Kit and the one for .NET MAUI. So let's click the .NET MAUI one. Set up your .NET environment. Um, so I'm pretty sure that I've got that set up already. Um, .NET dash dash version, create new terminal, .NET dash dash version. So we got that right. This shows a version. So I'm going to assume this is all right. Actually, this um, error right here, um, I got it. I've seen bug reports for this already. I'm not sure if this is some kind of configuration issue, but you can ignore it. It will still work. So I'm not really sure what's going on, but you can just ignore it just as this error acquiring .NET. Maybe some uh, path didn't get set up right, um, but it will still work. We'll see that in a little bit. So you can ignore that for now or tell me in the comments how to fix it myself so I can get rid of these annoying messages. Um, set up your .NET MAUI environment. So we did that as well. Um, .NET workload install MAUI, which is not technically correct for Linux, but we've seen that. So we've already done that. And then do .NET workload list and you can see the installed things. And now we can actually start creating our .NET MAUI app. So let's just do that. Click the button, create new project. All right, let's do that. And I can here create all kinds of apps. So these are all apps that I can build on Linux as well, but I'm going to go with the .NET MAUI app. It's going to ask me for a folder. 
So let's create a new folder, Maui test, create, open, uh, what should my Maui app be named like? Maui app one, let's just do that. And now it's going to uh, create my Maui app one project, go to reload the Visual Studio Code um, editor, and it's going to ask me like, hey, do you trust the authors? Can some kind of security implications here? Um, yes, I trust the author so I can run all the code in here. Again, the error that we can ignore. So let's just click that away. Um, and now it's activating the extensions. So it's activating the um, 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 .NET uh, C Sharp Dev Kit. It's installing the, um, 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 it's spinning up the .NET MAUI uh, extension. So we got all that. And actually it says fail to restore solution. .NET MAUI SDK not found. Okay, interesting. It's still, okay. So it has a couple of things. Android SDK not found. Um, so I do need to do a couple of things here apparently. Um, so I need to do, configure, set up Android SDK path. Um, all right, it actually picked it up automatically by just clicking that, I think. Um, down at Maui SDK, not found. Um, learn more. This is going to bring me to a browser, I guess. But I think I can just safely ignore this one because I'm pretty sure that you can definitely um, pick up my down at Maui SDK. So um, let me just see if I can. Oh, here we go. Let's just click this away and I'm just going to click away all the errors. So one thing that you want to do is go to this Maui app one and into the CS Proj, uh, because what it's trying to do is it's going to try and build the iOS and Mac Catalyst here as well, because this is the default template. So what we want to do is kind of like um, duplicate this line, then remove all of these from here and then kind of like mimic what we're doing for Windows here. So we also want to have this condition, but now for Linux and put it like this and put Linux in here and do not. And then add this target frameworks here in front as well. So the way this works is in our CS project is going to look for the target frameworks. For Linux, we can only do Android. So that is something we can do on Windows, on Mac OS, and on Linux. So that should always be there. Then we're going to have an additional target frameworks, and we have a condition if it's not Linux, um, because we can build iOS and Mac OS on Windows as well. So if it's not Linux, we can do, oh, we can get rid of the Android one here. Um, we can do iOS and Mac Catalyst in addition to the target frameworks that are already set because they are set right here. And then another condition for Windows because we can only build Windows projects on a Windows machine. So if the condition is Windows, then we're going to take the existing target frameworks and we're going to add Windows to it as well. So now we have it set up in a way that um, it works for all platforms. So let's just save that. And I'm not sure it's going to reload and it's going to verify the environment. So it's going to try and restore all the projects again. And now it should actually work because it was trying to restore the packages for iOS and macOS as well, which couldn't really work. So now it should actually work here. Okay, it keeps complaining about the Android SDK. So let's configure set Android SDK path. Um, let's actually then find it, Gerald Android SDK open. And now it should be able to find the Android SDK. So I think that would put everything in place. All right, updates required. Okay, I've seen that before. Um, you probably can, but you don't really have to. So I'm going to ignore this for now. Let me know how to update it um, and if it's really necessary for you. So what we can do now is go back to this Explorer right here and we can close this one and we can go to the Solution Explorer. So here, this is the Solution Explorer, much more to your, if you're used to Visual Studio Fool, um, this behaves a little bit more like the Solution Explorer there. The XAML files and the CS files are more close together. Um, you can see the dependencies and right click and manage you get packaging and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you can do all these kinds of things. So here we have that and we can inspect our XAML, we can inspect our code from here and make changes is at breakpoints. Um, and actually, if I go to the build and run pane right here and run and debug and I click run and debug and click the .NET MAUI profile, it should be able to build the project and it's going to start to run it or maybe it's just setting to build right now, or it will start to, trying to run it on the emulator, which will, won't work, but at least we can verify that it builds right now. So this all looks good. It's progressing uh, with building, so that's really great. The next step that we want to do is actually run it on our physical device, right? So let's say uh, the little plus sign here um, gives me a new terminal right here. And what you want to go is uh, cd dot dot, in my case, and CD, I want to go to my home, so I can do uh, dollar sign home as well. That brings me to my home. And then go to Android. 
because the Android SDK hasn't been added to my path, you can add the environment variable as well. Again, if you've had this set up already, that's totally fine. Um, let me see what the thing is here, SDK. And then I need to go into uh, platform tools, right? Whoops, platform tools. Because what's in here is um, ADB. And ADB is a tool for debugging, Android debugging bridge, I think. Um, and with ADB, you can do all kinds of things. Uh, one of which, and typically this happens through the UI, that's things that we do for you. But now we're on Linux, we do a little bit more ourselves, right? So we want to connect to our physical device. And we can do ADB um, connect, that's usually how you connect. But we also have pair. So let's do pair first. Um, and if I want to pair, I went into my developer options here. And th there's one big gotcha here that got me a couple of times. You can see the IP address and port right here. That's what you need for ADB connect in a little bit to actually connect to it. But if you want to pair, you click on this pair button right here and you will get this code. But note that the IP address is the same, but the port is different. So that's what got me a couple of times. Okay, so my Android um, project has been built, but it says no debug target available, so skipping debugging, that's fine. But it did build successfully. So let's go back to my terminal, adb pair, um, adb, not abd, adb pair, and then I can put in my uh, 192.168.1.59, and then it's going to adb not found. Oh, I need to dot slash. Okay, well, let's do this again. Dot slash. It's going to execute it, right? Now enter the code 251701. Enter. And now it's successfully paired. You can see it shows up. It was already here, but now it paired. it's paired two times. So it should work two times as good. But you can see it pairs automatically, right? So your device needs to be on the same Wi-Fi network as your machine, and then it can find each other automatically. So now I've got that set up. And now I can do dot slash ADB uh, connect, and I can say 192.168.1.59, and then the port number here, 33635, and now I can connect. Oh, I added an extra dot in here, can type under pressure. And now it says connected. And you can already see here, so here in the bottom, oh, I'm actually in front of that. So you can see that. But here at the bottom, you can see paired devices. So it showed up in here and you can now see it says currently connected, right? So I'm currently connected to my physical machine right here. And what's really cool, if you go back to Visual Studio Code, it's not really that discoverable, but here you have the curly braces. And if you hoover over that, you can uh, select your debug target. You can also pin it. So it's in your status bar right here that makes it a little bit more visible. And whenever you click that, you can see the devices. So I can see my emulator, I can select that, or I can now select my physical device that automatically showed up because I did that A to B connect. So I can just click that, um, or you can do control P, which brings up the command palette in Visual Studio Code, do the angle bracket and search for Maui, and you got a bunch of commands here as well, right? So you have pick up, uh, pick Android device, and you can pick the same devices, or get set up for development, configure Android. So you have a couple of things that will help you get this set up. And now um, you can see here still at the status bar that I have my Samsung uh, uh, device uh, selected. So if I do run and debug, again, it's going to again um, um, build my uh, project, but now it's going to actually start a debug session on my physical device. You can also do it on an emulator if you're running Linux on your physical machine, right? Or if you're smarter than me and you can figure out the nested virtual machine stuff going on that's right here. Okay, the project is built and now it's going to be deployed to my physical device. Um, I can either, you know, um, um, touch to my mirrored screen right here, or I can wake up my physical device right here. Um, and you can see it a little bit here in the camera view. I can just touch it. You can see whatever is happening there over on the screen. So I can click it here as well. Um, we just have the default in Maui template. And I can go here through the code, my um, 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 C sharp code. I can set a breakpoint here. I can click the button another time and it's going to hop over to my Visual Studio code. I can skip over a line. Um, I can actually inspect all the uh, parameter values right here. Um, so it's, it's a little bit slow because this is on my VM and, and this is going through Wi-Fi, so it's all not really optimal, but I promise you whenever you're going to do this in your environment, it's much better. Um, so you can do all these things, and now you know how to get set up with Linux, developing .NET MAUI applications on your Linux device for Android.
This was a little bit of a longer video than you're used to for me, but this is also a complete guide how to get started with .NET development on your Linux machine and actually debugging it on a physical device. So how amazing is that? I hope you learned a lot. Let me know if you have any more questions or can figure things out. Let me know down in the comments and I will make some follow-up videos or um, give you some answers in there. Thank you so much for watching again one of my videos. And if you want to know what this extension is actually all about, you probably already know, but maybe check out this video where I tell you all about it. See you for the next one.